morning. Um, the picture on the slide, you know I like a lot of things about that picture. Uh, beautiful sun that we've had recently, the mountains out there, the hometown airline liftoff point. It's a really exciting spot in your journey as you get underway. Another thing I really like about that picture though is all the cluster of buildings in the bottom. And if you see that uh, tower, the air traffic control tower, that was built in 1949 and it's still existing, still working. Uh, the technology then, a little different than now. When I first came to the airport, I went in there and said, hey, we're gonna show you where the aircraft are. And it was like an old submarine movie, something sweeping around a green circle. The, 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 wow, things have changed up there wonderfully so. So technology is really changing our air travel and we need it to change because your hometown airport is growing phenomenally. We've had 7.7% growth last year, we're into 13% growth this year, and probably the same, but a lesser degree next year before it settles back down. And why is that happening? It's probably happening because of all the good business, all the um, corporations here, and the startups, and the innovation. People need to travel, people need to connect. Not all business deals can be done over the net. You do need face-to-face -face at times. So, the three technologies that are going to help us are really key because we've got a very small footprint. In fact, our airport is so small, it's one of the smallest in North America. Our whole land base will fit between runways in Denver. It'll fit between the runways in Seoul, and it'll fit between the runways in London, of all places, too. Very small footprint. Technology is going to help us. Uh, what our airport planners come up with is in-span. We can't expand. We've got the in-span, and technology is going to help us use our footprint really more effectively. How do we do that? We've got to move people through and give them control of the journey to the airport. So, um, mobile devices and the apps, very key for us. Um, Self-service processing systems, we want to give you the control. We want to give you how to plan your journey through the airport. Because when you get to the airport, what are you worried about? Wait, wait, how do I get there? What do I do? I'm a little late on the freeway, oh my gosh. And of course, indoor navigation. Uh, today, I use navigation to get here. I have and also in the airport, two airlines, Alaska and Hawaiian, are allowing you to print your board, your bank tag in the airport at a kiosk. You can attach it yourself. What's neat about that, you don't have to go to a customer service agent. Pretty soon you'll have an automated place to drop your bag and you can move through the ticketing area quickly. In fact, our technologist, Dave Wilson, is here today, so stop calling it ticketing. You need to stop calling it, start calling it bag drop. And I worry that means we've got to change the buttons in 80 elevators from a team to something else. So the bag tag in the lower left is also a RFID tag, so it'll control and it'll know where your bag is all the way through the system. Uh, electronic tags, the pricing doesn't come down yet to be fully utilized by airports across the country or airlines, but it's coming. On the right is a neat picture because that's where you can self drop your bag. Um, there are locations in Europe now where you can place your bag and it'll size it, check for size, check for weight, and then you can do it automatically and it's gone. But it is a process of getting your own tag somehow because we need to track your bag and put it in. And well, so you'll be able to move through the kiosk much quicker than going to an agent on the right. Can you slide forward one more slide? While we're in the ticketing process, I want to show you a picture of now on the left. Traditionally in airports, you had to go to a long line of ticket because you needed to pay for your ticket. You needed to make that transaction. Transaction time's about two and a half minutes, much less now. And you kind of think, well, hold it. What was behind that wall on the left? Well, that was where the staff offices were, but most important, the cash office. A lot of people back in the day when they designed airports originally, this is a 1970 design, paid for tickets with cash. You show up with cash now and you pay for a ticket, you're on a watch list. Somebody's following you through over time. And then on the right, now what we've done, uh, we've partnered with Alaska, and several years ago we built a flow through ticketing on the right, and now Delta's built one on the left. So the passengers no longer have to turn 90 degrees, then turn 90 degrees, then turn 90 degrees. After all those turns, they're finally at the checkpoint. So the flow through, so it's like multi stage process, make it easy for you, you stay out of the long lines, et cetera. So what do you worry about when you get to the queues and the checkpoints? Oh, the line. This is gonna take a lot of time. Oh, do they have enough lanes open? 
I feel like I'm at the grocery store and I got the wrong line. Oh my gosh. So what you see on the left is a technique that's coming. It's going to load balance the lines. But what it's going to do is it's going to check you on the way through with facial recognition. Right now, we go through the airport as employees, we have to use fingerprints. A lot of places in Europe are using the iris, et cetera. Those are considered invasive touch, et cetera, but facial recognition will allow you to be known as safe traveling. And if you're a safe traveler, you'll be able to move into faster lines. It's kind of like the ability now to get into a line because it's a randomized process because you're considered a safe traveler, so you don't have to take off your shoes. But you know, not taking off your shoes saves a lot of time. On the right, that's the door into the jetway so you can get on your aircraft. The agents can free themselves up to help you with exception issues, not necessarily um, have to take your boarding pass and click it and check, et cetera. Okay, so um, have you ever come in and been asleep on an aircraft and you're coming in from, say, Shanghai? And doggone it, what? Oh, people like paper, paper, you got to fill out your declarations form. You know that takes time. Excuse me. So the challenge is, how do we speed things up? Because our growth in international traffic at SeaTech, your hometown airport, has been the fastest on the West Coast in the last five years. It's wonderful. We have to keep up with it. But we have a 1970 facility, and it's not enough space to run people through. So technology, again, is our friend. How can we use kiosks and automation? So uh, after landing now, the second picture from the left takes your photograph. You don't have to see a customs agent. You just have to know that you were checked as a safe traveler. And then they'll take it, and you can move through the system. Um, you can get a mobile passport control, and you'll be able to fill out your paperwork as you arrive at the airport, and you're walking or waiting to get to that location. But the fastest is you could go to Global, Nexus, et cetera, and you could buy your way for $100, $150 a year into the system. If you're an international traveler, you can move through that system very quickly because they pre-check the Euro Um This is kind of exciting. Uh, indoor navigation, um, we're pumped about this. For example, the picture on the left, SeaTac Airport, 13,000 signs, and we wear our badges to try to help with customer service when we're out on the floor. But what's funny is you'll see a male just going. A dead reckoning, I think, and the woman with him pulled it, read the sign. Not everybody reads the signs, but everybody interprets things differently, and we have so many languages out there now. With technology, we can deliver how do you navigate in different languages, and where do you want to go? So what's really neat, the picture in the middle shows you've come up into the north gates. That's in the north satellite where Alaska has a lot of their gates. Now you've arrived and you've decided, I want to get a cup of coffee on the way to the aircraft. And if I've been through checkpoint, I can carry that on the aircraft. So here's your navigation route to get to your gate. But what's more important, it'll give you pop-up notifications as your gate changed, as the airline moved your flight, et cetera. Um, the other really cool thing is, how much time have you got left? Have I got a half an hour? I wonder what concessions might be within five minutes of my walking, because we all want to cluster near the gate. We're a little bit worried. We've got to make sure we're on there. OK, I love the picture in the upper left. That's our technologist showing what happens at the airport. Everybody's got a device or multiple devices, and they need power. They've got to plug in. He's sitting on the floor. He's seen it everywhere. So what we've done is we've added power plugs everywhere, um, and we continue to do so. So we've got stand-up locations where you can plug in USB and power. And the lower left shows a rendering of what we're going to deliver in two, 2020. That's the North Satellite. We'll expand it by another six or eight gates, and uh, it'll be Alaska's uh, all-Alaska concourse, and we will put technology all through the building. Um, all right, so what does your personalized flow look like? If you start in the lower left, checkpoint two is much faster. You've got a three minute walk. It could save you 15 minutes. Divert, how do I get there? Here's the map and you can walk through the system. If your battery's low, there's a plug right beneath the seat next to you or adjacent. Gate 86 is two minutes from your current location. Oh good, I've got a lot of time. I've got time to spare. The satellite train. People worry, I've gotten on a train, I'm underground. What, how long am I going to be on this thing? My flight's and so 
90 seconds here on there. And there's multiple stops on subway. Have you ever gotten off a subway in a city and thought, is this the right door? Should I get off now or not? Sure, the signs will tell you. If you've read the map, sure. But you can also get a pop-up notification. No, wait for the next stop. Um, your flight is boarding. You can hang out in the restaurant. You can proceed to duty. And then, of course, this uh, luggage device on the right. Uh, your luggage is on plane two. You've arrived, and it's 20 feet away from you. You've never been waiting forever for your luggage. You know what's great now? You can buy luggage with RFID readers, and pretty soon it's going to become personalized to you. Our, our new CEO, we took him down to show the uh, baggage system, and he just freaked out. He's like, wow. Do you ever lose these things? We never lose a bag. We like to say we've misplaced one. <laughs> and he, said, he got mad. He said, hey, I had these golf clubs once. They were brand new, and I checked them in. And I was going to California from the Midwest. They didn't show up. Two months later, United's about to write me a check for them, and I got a call. Some guy in Hawaii. Are you ever going to pick up your golf clubs? You know, with that device on your right or some other kind of a tracking device, it's in your future. You're going to know where your bag is. You're going to know it's on board beneath you. You're going to know that it's moving through the system. And what you don't like about bags is they travel much farther than you do in an airport. We've got 10 miles of conveyor going out, 10 miles of conveyor coming in. It goes through all kinds of explosive detection and checking as it moves through the system. And in our future, when we showed you self-bag drop, self-tagging drop, you're going to be able to drop it anywhere you want in the whole airport. You'll be able to come in, park nearest your gate, drop the bag there, have a short distance, unless you want to shop somewhere certain, somewhere special to you to get it. Hey, that's it for the SeaTac. That's uh, what's coming at that. And, uh, things are taking off out there. You can be proud of your hometown airport. Thanks so much.